Welcome and thank you for staying tuned to Coral Gables Television today. We're on location at the Coral Gables Museum to meet a national and international award-winning artist. You know, many of us want to know who like the man is behind that mask in Batman. Well, today we get to meet the man behind this splendid sculpture that many of you might have noticed placed in front of City Hall. Let's welcome Mr. Rafael Barrios. Welcome, bienvenido. Thank you very much. Thank you for your invitation. Well, thank you again for being here, Rafael. Tell us about this splendid creation that we know as Paws and that title. It's a, well, it's a sculpture that we've been uh, planning for quite a while with Coral Gables and uh, designed it for them. And I have noticed that a lot of people have told me that my work has this sense of film, of filmmaking. Not video, but not the new, uh, but real film. And uh, it's something that when you're watching a movie or something, you, you press pause, you get that sensation that there's something alive there uh, being uh, encapsulated. And because of that, I, I do feel that that sculpture in particular has a strong sense of levitation. Uh, I wanted to recall that moment in which your mind thinking is thinking that it's levitating. You know, I don't know about you, but precisely pause makes me want to pause and see more of your creations. And fortunately, we can do that, right? Your, your artwork is going to be here at the Coral Gables Museum. Yes, yes, until yes. Um, the 27th of this month. Unfortunately. No, very fortunately. I wanted it to be long. Yes, unfortunately. But it was great. It was a wonderful experience. So I'm really happy with the uh, curatorship. Uh, it's the first time that I find that a, uh, a curator sort of helps me to push up, push forward, and also calm me and down. And you in. <laughs> because I think if she wasn't there, which is Catherine Cathers, it, it, this place would be full of artwork and nobody could even walk. <laughs> now your collection, Rafael, has been described a bit as a play of light and space. Can you explain to us a little bit about the pieces that are featured in this collection? Yeah, this is actually a compendium of, of uh, different times of my experimentation and, and work. And um, it, it represents all of the different uh, experiments that I'm doing and I usually do them in this context which is a, a synthesis of, of some kind of a geometry that you participate with because your mind looks at it as something that is actually three-dimensional or structural or volumetric when it's really just a, a concave uh, presentation that your mind reads as volumetric. Rafael, I want to tell them a little bit more about your background. It's kind of interesting. Some that maybe would say exemplifies kind of the definition of American. You were born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, but you have a Venezuelan background. Now, you started at a very early age studying drawing and painting at the Museo de Bellas Artes in my native Caracas, Venezuela. So like, I'm going to take you real back to that early age. What was the moment that you would say that you realized that you wanted to be or that you were an artist? Well, uh, I remember when I was 16, I did a, a large painting uh, of the development of the city and the new bridges inside the city. And, it, and, and I saw these buildings in between the, the highways that were elevated highways. So I did a, a drawing like a, like if I, if I was weaving buildings with highways. And it won a prize, and that felt good. <laughs> it felt good. And, uh, but then again, I was always interested in uh, physics and uh, experimentation and scientists. And I did uh, apply for, to study physics in McGill University. And uh, I don't know if I was accepted because before they told me I was accept, accepted or not, I had already decided to go to Ontario College of Art in Toronto, Canada. And now what was your parents' reaction, you know, when you said, Mama, Papa? Oh, it's, it was fine because my mother studied arts and uh, 
my whole life has been around the arts and around cultural uh, institutions. So now I began this interview mentioning that you're an award-winning artist. What is your favorite? Do you have a favorite award and why? Uh, it's, it's wonderful to be recognized, you know, but it's, it's wonderful to also believe that you don't know anything. To be able to start from zero and have that fresh feeling, sensation of reinventing yourself all the time. So, Rafael, you know what, why don't we do something? I don't think that describing your pieces does them justice. Why don't we take a walk and you show us some of your pieces? Let's do it. So, Rafael, tell us a bit about this piece. This, this uh, sculpture came about in, in the sense that when I draw my work, I, I like to see it in vertically all around to make sure that it's within the context of levitating. It's, my crazy thing. That's why uh, when you look at this static wall piece, uh, I don't know, it's a mural, but you can also enjoy the sensation of changing the, changing the dynamics of, of the wall, of the piece of the house. Wow, and, uh, it's kind of like the wheel of, of Rafael. No, it, I don't want it to be rotating. I would put a motor. I want it just to change position. Sure, very nice. Well, let's take a look at another piece. Okay, this, this other sculpture is, uh, I want it to be a little more eerie, you know? Uh, so I started experimenting with translucent stainless steel. Then again, when I had to photograph it, to, you know, to have a, information of my work, I noticed that this miracle came through that the shadow, it was a gift, it was a gift from God, because it, it, it reacts to, it becomes very kinetic, you know? Yes. And it's fun. That's amazing, yeah, it makes something movement from something static. Yes. Wonderful, well, let's, I wanna see more. Okay, mobiles, this is a mobile. I've always admired Alexander Calder. This is one of my favorite artists in the world apart from Leonardo da Vinci. And uh, I've always wanted to do, actually, a mobile that wouldn't look like Mr. Calder's. So after many years that uh, I've been doing it, uh, came up with this and with others. Beautiful. And it's very light, so it reacts to the, even the air conditioning. And your breath. <laughs> your breath. All right, let's keep moving right along, and one more piece. How about this one? One more piece. Oh, oh, this one. Well, it's, I wouldn't say more of the same, but it's uh, still playing with levitation, with getting that sensation that, even though you know it's a structure, even though you're looking at something concave, it will tend to, in your mind, it would tend to become volumetric, and the sensation of it being in a, pause as we were talking. Yes, as, your, as the statue that's being featured right now. Well, Rafael, you know, we saw all this, you know, play of light and movement, reflections of, of all kinds of things with your works of art. So I want to leave with a reflection, the following, one of thought. A world without art for Rafael Barrios is a world, and you fill in the blank. It would be a blank, because we, I mean, the necessity of art makes a human spirit grow and evolve into the wonderful thing that life is. Well, you know what, Rafael? We are grateful for a world with Rafael Barrios and his art, which all of you can continue to see right here at Coral Gables Museum all this month. So we thank you, Rafael. It's my pleasure. And we do want to give a special thanks to Coral Gables Museum for having us here today. And we thank you for continuing to stay tuned yeah, to Coral Gables Television, where you can continue to see the best places, meet the most interesting people, and go to all the funnest places. So I with like that, it. we bid you farewell. Funnest, funnest. <laughs> <laughs> that we yeah, are. There's a lot more work, so please come. That we are. That's right. So with that, we leave you for now. I'm Rita Varios. Thank you for watching. Until next time.